Hi, everybody. This is Sherry Leopold with Outside the Box with Sherry. And I'm super excited to share a dear friend of mine, Brian Keith South. And he is going to be someone who's going to help you if you have someone that is going to be going to college. And I'm just delighted to share him with you because he's just an incredible human being, number one, but he is an author and a speaker and an educational coach. So if one of those things speaks to you, you're going to want to stay tuned. So welcome to the show, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. It's a, it's a pleasure to be on you on the show. I'm so happy to be here because I know we, we've talked for a long time about this book and there was a lot in the making and a lot went into it and there were some bumps in the road and it sure. is out for people to be empowered by it. Can you tell us a little bit about why, what the name of the book is, why you chose to help people demystify the college admission process? Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, um, I've, I have been um, coaching young people and actually all kinds of people in between, you know, of all different ages, actually, uh, for uh, more than... 10 years, actually, now that we're in January 2021, it's actually been about 11 years. And the book was, in, I've always wanted to write a book. Uh, this wasn't the book I actually was going to write. Uh, it, 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 it sort of, I attended a seminar and this book, I, this book just sort of happened. But- uh, I love when that happens. <laughs> right, uh, it is. But as I got, but, but, Part of what really fueled my desire to write this particular book, aside from serendipity, is that I, 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 when I work with a lot of my students, especially the young ones, I put a lot of demands on them to, so that they could achieve the best personal version of themselves. And as I was this, and I was giving them lots of uh, additional homework assignments because if they just depended on what they were going to get in the public school system, I was concerned that they, they, would, they, uh, they would not even be able to read or perform simple arithmetic, let alone get a degree, because that's the fate of a lot of students, our system, especially uh, in urban areas. So I right. wanted them to have to be prepared the best. So I gave them supplemental work besides what I was helping with. And as I was doing this, I was saying to myself, so if I'm going to expect a lot from them, I need to I need to walk in their shoes. I should have equally a project I'm working on. So I mean, down the road, I'm intending on getting a PhD in psychology. That's one of my one of my on my bucket list. But in the meantime, oh, I, I said, <laughs> yeah. Well, in the meantime, I said, you know, I should write. Well, I I know I always wanted to write a book, but I said to myself. Well, I need to write a book now. And, and I made to make myself accountable, I told all the students, I'm going to write a book. And so for years, they kept asking, you know, while I was going through these bumps in the road writing it, they said, when is that book going to come out? When is that book going to come out? And then- I Love that accountability, now, don't we? <laughs> yeah, and so, it, so that really pushed me to make sure it was done because I promised all these young people that I was going to write a book. And so a lot of them now have my book in their home and they're, you know, so, uh, but awesome. that was what drove me uh, is that is to, is to set a goal. Now, the second reason is that one of the things I discovered for myself when I went through the college admission process is that an area that's not emphasized at all, but is the most critical, I think, in success, not only in college, but in life is our mindset, our beliefs. Um, yes. our, our level of focus, our confidence, um, our resilience, our determination to see through a difficult project, regardless of what circumstances are happening around us. And I, because, and I discovered that just knowing uh, the mechanics of passing tests or, or doing well in subjects is not enough because there are plenty of students who either uh, they they're very they're doing very well and that and yet they still fail anyway or they'll graduate and they'll wonder was this even worth it I've had some students the people I know I'm friends with today who graduated from elite colleges and programs and they said I feel like I wasted my time because yeah. 
They did not self inventory. They did not ask themselves, what are my values? What is my mission in life? What, what makes me happy? And how would I serve people at the greatest level? And these are questions that people should ask themselves whether they're going to college or they're just going directly into a career or graduate program or an online training program. I agree. And, I and think- I, I, I'd actually like to pause here and just ask you a question because I, I have a feeling I know what the answer is. Do you feel that at least maybe it's not as true today, but there was a period of time where it was like the instruction was do what's going to get you a job that will pay you well, not that will fulfill you, but that will pay you. Um, Uh And so a lot of people ended up in careers that they wouldn't have chosen if they had taken the time, like you said, to say, what's what, how do I want to serve? How do I want to impact the world? Had they taken that inventory, like you were talking about, or had somebody to mentor them in that area mm-hmm. that they would have completely chosen something different? That, that is a great question. And I could probably talk for days on that point alone. But <laughs> you I'll, could do a I'll, whole weekend I'll, conference. <laughs> yeah, you could. I mean, I, I actually could. I mean, there's, I, I thought about this question very deeply and profoundly. I've read several books on the topics. I've read such books as Do What You Love, The Money Will Follow, and yes. so, so on. And so it's an age question. So I, I, have, I have a couple of answers that I could give you right now for the purpose of this interview. And that is, um, there, there, there is no guarantee that the hot money-making career field that you choose today will, will be making money when you graduate. Uh, right okay. now, this was true even 30 years ago when, when, when the world was fairly stable, but it's even true now is that, is that um, especially with artificial intelligence on the horizon, I mean, jobs, uh, careers, whole programs are created and gone. So those- Yeah, and automation predict- is just, you know, is a whole nother thing coming into play in that along with the sure. AI, right? Right. And, and, you know, Daniel Pink, you know, in his book, A Whole New Mind says that we're, he said that we're entering an age, it's called the conceptual age in which the artistic, creative, playful mindset will be rewarded more so than the traditional linear careers, uh, right, night now, like programming and finance law, and right. even in the medical field, because automation will be able to take over most of all those positions. So, you know, so, um, so if you're looking at, so actually from a practical sense, your, your passion, being pursuing your passion is actually the practical approach because you can't guarantee what, your, what, what, the, what the market will command uh, in the future, but you can, but if you're clear about your values, your purpose, it won't matter. I mean, we, we, we can't discount money. Money is important, but even if you weren't making any money, you would feel fulfilled because you're doing what's important. And the other thing too, is that a lot of people don't think about, let's say that, that their, uh, that the career they chose for pure for the sake of money did work out and they, 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 they're making money. Well, if they're a lot of people, because they're unhappy in jobs that are unfulfilling, they're spending more money on psychotherapy to, 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 to try to counteract the bad feelings they're getting on the job. They're ta- That's they, right. They, or they're, they're burning out or right. you know, any other number of things or getting right. through a career after 30 years and going, why did I do this? You know, right. that's probably yeah. more so, people in our age group. But I love yeah. the fact that actually because you're doing this, because of your book and the educational part of what you're doing is actually helping young people especially, or people who are pursuing a second career perhaps, to actually not do that, not make that mistake by taking that pause and getting that, getting connected with the right things before you leap into something and doing that, if you call it pre-homework, right? right. And knowing what you really want to do and how you want to show up. You know, there's great to have letters behind your name, but um, if you don't care about the work you're doing and it's not serving you internally, 
Mm-hmm. Where's the happiness indicator in that? You know, that's where right. that burnout comes. People generally rarely get truly burned out on doing something they love doing. No, they don't. In fact, if they run into challenges or things, they'll, you know, they they may they may need to take a couple of days off, clear their head, but they'll they'll come back full speed ahead because right, you know, it you know, bumps in the road, obstacles, occasional failures are just part of anyone's journey, no matter what they do. But the difference is if you're doing what you love, you know, you'll you'll say, Oh, okay, I made a wrong turn today, no big deal. But if you're if you've completely chosen a wrong path or a path that's unfulfilling then every single day is a wrong is a wrong detour um, as opposed right. it's like being in a bottomless pit where you're just falling and falling and falling and in unfulfill in 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 the in the rabbit hole of unfulfillment you know so um, and I, I think of my my son Josh who is an attorney and uh-huh. he was going to school to become a history teacher and uh-huh. um, about I think it might have been the beginning of his senior year, the end of his junior year. He was like, I don't know. I mean, he's three years into college and he's like, I don't think this is what I want to do. And, you know, every parent's nightmare. Oh, my God. Three years into something. Right. But it wasn't it wasn't a bad thing because he knew what he wanted to do. And his, right. his, actually, he was so good in history. They wanted him to continue in a master's program uh, and continue on like PhD. They wanted him to do that. And he is extraordinary mm-hmm. at that. However, he mm-hmm. actually came back with, I think I'm going to go to law school. And I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, but he was very sure that's what he wanted to do. And, you know, I, I was like, okay, you know, we'll support you and whatever you want to do. But like, I was so glad, Brian, that he actually took that time and that introspection to know that he didn't see himself 10 years, 15, 20 years down the road teaching. He could have done that and been great at it. He's a great teacher, but he knew that wasn't where his joy center was. Like that wasn't, that didn't resonate right for him. And I was very grateful. He was one of the lucky ones that he actually figured that out ahead of time, you know, Mm -hmm. so that was good. But I think that's where having somebody like you would have been instrumental. It might even have saved him more time, actually, if he'd had your book or he'd had he'd had some educational coaching on that with a person who's like, hey, let's look at these things. Right. Right. Yeah. The thing is. Uh, my belief or my approach is it's not that you discount your joy or you even discount money because money is important too. But then here's, here's some questions that I would, I would encourage people to think about if they're teetering between a high paying position versus a fulfilling position is, is it, I mean, do you need to make all of the money at, 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 at your job? I mean, you, you, you know, we live in an amazing world now where you can you can have small businesses on the side that are paying you residual money, you know, uh, when you're not well, independent of your job or you right. can write books like I did. Said the person or you, who does like eight things. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you could actually do that and yes. you, you could actually do that easily on your smartphone or on your tablet or on your yeah. laptop. So um, or. You know, I mean, there you could, you can, um, you know, you can, uh, you can uh, invest in precious metals, or you could, or you could buy real estate. Uh, you know, there are so many. Uh, I mean, it's not even uh, from what I've learned, from what I've experienced. Um, it's not even. It's not even uh, financially practical. Depend on one job to be your primary source of income, anyway. So, if you're really thinking about money. It really doesn't matter if you're a surgeon making eight hundred thousand dollars a year, um, or if you're a custodian or a truck driver and you're making fifty thousand, but you invest your money wisely and you live frugally. You can you actually have just as much potential to be wealthy as any Absolutely. as anyone out. If, if, so money really isn't a factor because there's always ways of making money, and. Yes. 
The other thing I believe too, is that no matter what you're doing, since we, there's 8 billion people in the world. So someone somewhere out in this world desperately needs the service that you're offering and will be willing to pay dearly for it because you know somebody wants what you have and needs it. It's just a matter of knowing how to, something I'm learning actually, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a student in this process, to, but, but it's something I'm understanding is that it's how you package it off, it's how you, it's how you market what you do, it's how you network and connect with other people. Absolutely. Um, so and I think money, also, money is, you know, that's, it kind of reminds me of something I wrote about in my self-bullying, what to do in the Bully is You book, where I talk about like your farm and that's, and when I talk about it in business, it's like, who do you need? But it's same in college, like, who do you need to know that you don't know um, mm -hmm. to make the right choices? And that's why I shine a light on people who are doing extraordinary things. You are one of those people who does something that's sort of niche, sort of, but unusual, but necessary, that maybe some people don't even know that you are there as that type of a resource. And that's why I love to use this platform to shine a light on people who are doing things that maybe somebody's just not even, I didn't know that was a thing, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah. there it is. And, you know, and people can connect with you on whatever level they can purchase the book and learn through the book, or they can enroll with you and coach with you through that process, whatever way serves them and, uh -huh. or just be inspired by you to, you know, do their own thing. So I, I, I love that about you, but I love that about this industry and that we get to just create the network that um, allows us to be us, right? And shine whatever way that is, but we do get to serve with whatever gifts that we have. Um, I want to thank you for your gift that you are, how you are serving. Um, if people want to get in contact with you, Brian, how would they do that? Well, um, uh, right now, uh, the, the, the means of contact are rudimentary. It's just uh, my, I, my, my telephone, my, I have uh, an email address that people can reach me at. Um, I'm in my, uh, my publishers are going to be developing my website. And so uh, once that's complete, then I'll be able to provide that in the future. Okay. But, Super. but, but that's how they could do it. And, and uh, I'm on social media, I'm on Facebook as well. So yeah, and, can... and, and you can reach out to Brian, Brian Keith South on Facebook. Uh, and I'm sure that the links to those things will be there as well and and we'll share them as well. Um, so I'm so grateful that you joined us, joined me here today. I can't even, it's terrible. I can't remember how we even got introduced, but you are a delightful human being. And, and I'm so happy that you are in my network and that we are friends because I just love your servant heart. Um, and, and I know I've told you that before, but I just really, truly do love that about you. And I love that you have a passion for helping young people. I know it's part of your story, which is probably part of an, another book that's coming at some point, yeah. <laughs> which we'll have you on to talk about that too, because it is incredibly inspiring. And trust me, if you work with Brian, you'll be getting an enormous gift. So um, do reach out and connect with him and follow what he's doing um, because he's an extraordinary human. Thank you for being uh, a part of Outside the Box with Sherry, Brian. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> and if you are watching and you would like to be a guest on Outside the Box with Sherry, we shine a light on great human beings who are doing extraordinary things in the world, just like Brian. All you have to do is send me an email at sherry at sherryleopold.com and we'll have a conversation, see if you might be the next guest. And until next week, thanks for joining us. <laughs>